In what has been the weakest IPO market since 2009, Nutanix's listing on the Nasdaq last week has given investors hope of more tech offerings to come. This after the enterprise data storage provider raised more than $238 million and surged more than 130% in its market debut, the biggest bounce for any U.S. listing so far this year. Joining us now is Ajit Singh, who is co-founder of the company, and of course our own tech reporter Arjun is back with us as well. Ajit, let me ask you about the listing and whether you think this spells more to come for the markets because it felt like there was a window coming up to the US election, coming up to a potential rate hike, that coming to market was a little bit opportunistic. Give us a sense about your timing and why you did come to market. Yeah, I think um, uh, Nutanix had filed for a business that we are building uh, at Nutanix, so um, any time would be good. But uh, I think in general, over the last several months, there has been uh, several companies in the valley that could have gone IPO but have waited for the right time. And with Nutanix doing as well as it has done, uh, I would expect to see a lot more IPOs and them doing well later this year. Um, Ajit, when you look at some of the companies here who are staying private, raising uh, funds in the private markets, the likes of Uber, for example, does this trend worry you at all? Do you think there's going to be uh, a big uh, group of companies ready to go public at one time and perhaps the public markets uh, isn't ready for that? Yeah, I, I, I do think that uh, in 2014 and 15 there was a lot of money that was raised in uh, private markets. But uh, I would put companies in two categories. The ones that were building real businesses, that are long-term businesses in big markets, and the ones that were raising money uh, on some hype. Uh, I think the ones that were hyped uh, have found it very hard to be able to maintain their uh, private market valuations. But companies that have built real businesses for the long term uh, would definitely be able to come out and create good value uh, for the long term. And you're one of the lucky ones to have gone public, but there seems to still be some skepticism in the market about some of the new uh, tech IPOs we've seen this year. A note yesterday from Global Equities Research called Nutanix a junk IPO uh, and said the stock could fall about 70% this year. How do you respond to something like that? Yeah, markets always, I think, uh, have extreme reactions to various things, as we saw earlier this year. We had uh, one of the worst uh, start uh, for the year. And uh, my second company, ThoughtSpot, actually I was able to raise uh, about $60 million uh, in that really bad market because we are building a real company that solves a real problem uh, in the long term. Um, when Nutanix uh, went IPO, uh, you know, it was listed at uh, some price, but uh, we saw a huge pop on, early, uh, on the first day of trading. Uh, when people see something like that, I think the market is still trying to figure out how to value these companies that are really disrupting very, very large markets. Uh, so I do expect in the long term the value to actually uh, sustain itself and grow, if anything. Your company is quite interesting from the perspective that we were starting out the show having a conversation about Twitter and who would like to buy a company like that uh, and whether it's about um, buying a type of technology to try and keep you in the game, to keep you more nimble and to stay as a disruptor in the marketplace. But if you can go into a lot of big companies and provide them with the type of technology that makes them a disruptor, doesn't that kill the theme of buying out? existing technology companies on the market? Doesn't it kill a little bit of M&A, the likes of a, a Twitter takeover, for instance? Yeah, I, I, I think, uh, you know, uh, technology is becoming a very interesting uh, marketplace. Uh, the world is becoming more and more digital. Uh, companies like GE uh, want to become a digital company, so and they don't have the technology. So overall, the world in the world, uh, technology is definitely playing a much bigger role. Uh, if you look at the top five companies in the world today, they are companies like Facebook and and uh, Apple and and Google. Ten years ago, you had companies like Exxon and and Walmart and so on as as uh, the biggest companies. So, so your message is that companies can do this organically. They can change, they can evolve, they can become disruptors by having organic technology in the business, not necessarily through M&A, through acquisitions. Yeah, and that's exactly uh, what two of my companies uh, are doing, both Nutanix and ThoughtSpot. We have, we have brought that Google-like technology to traditional businesses uh, like GE uh, that want to become digital, that want to transform themselves, but they don't have the engineering talent uh, themselves to be able to do it. In the last 15 years, the biggest tech innovation has happened at companies like Google. So at uh, Nutanix, we brought Google's data center technology to the enterprises, and it has created uh, a really large company that uh, still continues to grow and potentially can disrupt a $50 billion market. And uh, at ThoughtSpot, uh, we are bringing uh, technology, uh, search technology, and applying it for numbers. 
So uh, more than half a billion uh, knowledge workers in the world can use search for accessing their business information, just like you use Google for finding a coffee shop. You can use ThoughtSpot for uh, finding uh, your uh, sales and marketing and spend and customer churn and things like that. So what, what are the, other than GE, which is also partially doing a lot of this itself, uh, but certainly be, you know, u utilizing companies like yours, what other more traditional sectors or companies are now becoming your clients that maybe would not have been there five years ago? Yeah, so, uh, you know, it, it's actually across the board. I use GE as an example because GE is, you know, a, a big industrial company. We have one of the largest uh, biopharmas uh, uh, in the U.S. that uh, does cancer drug research, and uh, they're using ThoughtSpot for analyzing clinical trials data so that the drug researchers, researchers can f bring drugs uh, to the market in a much, much faster manner. Uh, this is not the kind of... Uh, uh, business and process that companies were looking to run uh, five to ten years ago, but they're realizing if they do not use technology from startups, they will be left behind. Because startups are the ones that are bringing the best technology. It's not the largest uh, tech companies uh, like Oracle and IBM that are uh, bringing the latest technology uh, to them. So you are more a disruptor maybe for other tech companies than you are for, let's say, more traditional companies because you're complementing them. Is that how you would say? Uh, absolutely. Yeah, We are helping uh, traditional businesses use technology that has been built at Google but they don't have access to it yeah. we are building similar technologies for them and allowing them to do things that are not otherwise possible Ajit, you, you mentioned with ThoughtSpot you raised some money earlier this year um, having gone through the IPO experience is that something you want to take uh, ThoughtSpot the route uh, is that the route you want to take with ThoughtSpot an IPO public market route yeah, yeah, definitely. That's uh, you know a function of how ambitious you are as an entrepreneur, and I've always like, been excited about picking very large markets to begin with, even before starting a company, because that allows you to uh, build a lasting company and finding problems that are really, really hard to solve. So ThoughtSpot has taken upon itself to build new kind of search technology that can crunch numbers at scale, and anybody inside a company, whether it's a marketing person or a salesperson, not a data scientist, they can use ThoughtSpot, a very simple search bar, to crunch numbers, to access information about what's happening in the business. If Brexit has happened, how do I find out what my exposure to Brexit is? Oh. Um, and Just being a fund, an example, yeah. yeah, and not wait for a week uh, for someone to give a report to me because by that time the world would have changed again. So I need access to data right here, right now, and that is something that ThoughtSpot provides. Thank you so much for joining us today. Much appreciated uh, in terms of giving me. us your time today. Ajit Singh, co-founder at Newtonix, with us around the set.